Inside Oswego Speedway kicks off this week with highlights from the July 19th Summer Championship in the Pathfinder Bank Small Block Super Division, and it was Craig Harris and Dalton Doyle starting up there on row number one with Jason Simmons in the 98 machine and rookie Matt Magner in the black number two running back there in fourth, but he made quick work of the Doyle 01 out of corner number two to move up into third. Simmons in the 98, who has had issues all year long despite one feature win, got the benefit of starting up front in this one, but trouble would strike again on lap number two as the transmission would break down. In the number 98 of Simmons, he was able to clear the racetrack before yellow lights would come on, and that would allow Russ Brown in the number 13 machine his first race of the 2014 season to continue to work his way through the field as he gets by Simmons' teammate J.J. Andrews there into corner number three, next by the Doyle number 01 into the same corner on lap number five. Brown started all the way back in row number six, and in just five laps, and managed to work his way up into the top three spots. Yellow lights later on, the top two championship contenders, Jack Patrick and Andrew Shartner would get together. They both would have to restart at the tail side of the field. And on the restart, Brown would continue his march through the field, this time working to the low side of Magner out of corner number two to move up into the runner-up spot as J.J. Andrews in the number 93 tries to work through as well, but was unable to do so. Another caution later on, this time between the 22 of Mike Bruce and the 73 of Alex Hogue would give Brown a late race chance at your race leader, Craig Harris, and he would take advantage out of corner number four on that restart, working to the low side into corner number one to take the top spot. In his first race at Oswego Speedway in 2014, your defending series champion, a five-time series champion, would charge on to the summer championship victory back on July 19th to get the main event win over Harris, Magner, Andrews, Rob Pullen, Anthony Lacerdo, and Dalton Doyle as Russ Brown out of Mansville, New York would roll into Turning Stone Resort Casino Victory Lane as the summer champion as he continues to prepare for this week's Mr. Small Block Super Modified. Well, I was watching Craig on the restarts a couple that he had during he was sliding up, so I just backed the corner up a little and got a better run, that's all. Uh, Craig ran a good race and uh, it's all good. The new car works good. We still got some bugs to work out, so uh, all in all, it's a good night, good way to return. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's tough, but I, if any, if I were to come in second to anybody, I, I'd want it to be Russ. So, uh, you know, he's uh, he's always good. You know, it shows the first time this year and he can then do this. So, uh, you know, we're still pretty happy con considering our finishes this year. So. I'm a little hungrier now, but uh, I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, I don't have a lot of laps here, so finish third. I mean, two guys, really good guys, finish in front of me. I'm happy right now. We'll we'll build on this. Central New York's fastest action continues in the month of August at Oswego Speedway, home of the Super Modified. Saturday, August 9th, it's Driver Autograph and Ovarian Cancer Awareness Night, presented by JP Jewelers. Join us on the Speedway's front stretch to meet your favorite race car driver. Then, Labor Day weekend, it's the Budweiser International Classic 200. For more information, visit online at OswegoSpeedway.com. It's Driver Autograph Night at Oswego Speedway, Saturday, August 9th. Kids 16 and under free. And the nightcap on July 19th would be the 50-lap Novella Super Modified Summer Championship. With Brian Sweeney and Tim Devendorf starting up there on row number one, Brandon Bellinger drove to a heat race win earlier in the night. He would start in third on the outside of that second row. It's Dan Connors Jr. returning to the Speedway for the first time this year in that extreme chassis that he campaigned here at the Speedway the last two seasons. And he put it to good use here early on, moving to the outside of the Speedway into that runner-up spot. But keep a look back here further back as Otto Sitterly, Michael Barnes, the 26 of Sean Goslin, and the 56 of Hal Tulip all tangle. Coming out of corner number four on the initial start, Barnes would have to go to the pit area to repair the wing damage to the front of that machine. Otto Sitterly would do the same as well in the Rosselli Northern car number seven. That would result in a complete double file restart with Devendorf one more time working out into the top spot in the five machine with Connors filing into second but the car on the move early on here in the first two circuits of the main event was the 37 of Randy Ritzkis in the Lock Crane Services machine a two-time feature winner this year he picked up the spring championship back in May and one of the twin 35 main events here in the month of June and Ritzkis working by Keith Champagne and Tim Snyder right there. Now to the high side of Michael Muldoon down the back straightaway and into corner number three. Ritzkis, who started back in position number eight, would work his way all the way up into the top three in the first two laps of this one. Next, working by the outside of Brian Sweeney for the third spot. 
with Connors next in line going into corner number one as they continue to file out of corner number two down the back straightaway. Ritzkis would waste no time cutting to the low side into corner number three to move right into that runner-up spot. After a quick caution at lap nine for a brief rain shower, green lights would come back on and Ritzkis again would waste little time taking the lead on lap number nine on the restart. So Ritzkis from position number eight would pass eight cars to take the lead in just nine laps. Lap number 14 now, Keith Champagne and that Ocidic Racing Technologies number 55 would find the high side of the speedway on the 0-2 of Brandon Bellinger down the front stretch to move up and into the top five position. So Champagne looking very good in the Chris Ocidic machine, looking for his best finish so far of the 2014 racing season. Later on, Muldoon would next find the low side on the 0-2 of Bellinger into that first corner. Bellinger would slip up high. That would allow the 22 of Pat Lavery, the 50 of Dave Gruel, as well as the double zero of Joe Gosick and Otto Sitterly to make low side moves here as we approach the halfway point. Later on, Ritzk is continuing to lead after another restart. Devendorf in second. Connors is in third. Brian Sweeney would bobble out of corner number four. And Champagne again would go to the outside of the racetrack, coming out of corner number two to take over the fourth position as Sweeney drops back to fifth ahead of Muldoon and Lavery in that order as they work between corners number three and four. But out in front, once he took the top spot, it was all Randy Ritzkis on his way to his third win of the 2014 season and his 12th career victory at Oswego Speedway Lifetime. So Ritzkis, the only driver at the Big O so far this season with three main event wins on the year doing an outstanding job this season, driving for Ken and Jeff Locke in that Locke Crane Services car number 37. You know, we don't go fast when we practice. You know, we never do, but this thing is just so good in traffic. Like, it's a pleasure to drive. We went on the outside in this race, and, you know, Brian Algresso, John Ricci, all these guys, they, they throw their heart into it. Kenny Locke showed another tier. You think he'd be getting used to this by now, but he's not. Yeah, that was the case. Uh, on the restarts, my car is a little bit tight, and uh, I kind of pinch it off a little bit. I get loose. Randy was pretty good on the restart, so he'd pull away a bit. And uh, you know, it took me a few laps to get some heat to get the car kind of equalized again and get a little rhythm with that push because you got to drive it a little different with a push. And uh, you know, I start to reel him in a little bit, and uh, you know, kind of stayed with him. We kind of equalized, both run about the same for a little while, and uh, you know, again, restart happened. He pulled away. I'd have to reel him in, but. Uh, you know, he's a tough competitor. I knew he'd probably get me eventually. I was uh, hanging on as hard as I could to stay in front of him, but uh, couldn't do it. But uh, second place is great, and uh, you know, cars in one piece. I'm going on vacation next week, so I don't have to worry about the cars, so that's good. And uh, you know, I'll take second. You know, you keep finishing up here in the top three, five, ten, uh, eventually you're gonna get a win. It's kind of an easy way to finish third, starting up front, but uh, we're just, you know, we didn't think we'd come here and do this good with a car sitting all winter. You know, we built a new car, and. We, we've been struggling with it all year, and last week we rocked bad enough where we couldn't get it back together, so we got this back. We were planning on getting this back together earlier anyways, but it's back now, and uh, you know, it, it didn't run great tonight, but it was enough to stay up front and hang on. 